Hello, everybody. My name is Reynaldo Rodriguez. I am a candidate master from Venezuela. Today, we are going to see the second part of the highlights of the uh, Tata Steel tournament. Uh, we select some of the most interesting uh, games of round number five to, to seven. So in the round number five, we are going to analyze a Nidor Sicilian uh, played between Candelius Nils and Maxime Bashir Lagre, uh, the French player that is quite popular to, uh, to use this defense in a very regular way. Uh, we select these uh, couple of games uh, played by Maxime because uh, those games used to be quite tactical, where probably the, uh, the one of the most important things is the concrete calculation and the deep preparation previous to the game. Uh, the strategic uh, part of the game is still there, but not too important as usual, because as the positions are so open and crazy, really the calculations skills are very important. So we are going to see some structures that really will be very disorganized and difficult to, uh, yeah, to, to keep and find some positional patterns. There. So let's start with this. By the way, uh, a lot of theory. So, okay, uh, round number five, Randelius Nils versus MBL. Here we have the, after open system, um, AC. This is the move that defined the Knight of Sicilia. And normally in the Knight of, uh, Vlad wants to go with the pawn to e5, preventing that the knight can jump to, to b5. So that's the point of a6. Uh, so bishop g5. This move looked for a tray and creation of double pounds. e6 prevent that. And now f4 winning a space and potentially uh, pushing the, the pawn to increase the pressure on the pin. Uh, in this position, uh, MBL, in a regular way, he decides to go for, for queen b6. Uh, taking advantage of the fact that the bishop is out of the pawn chain and the pawn is hanging. So th this variant is known as the poison pawn variant because uh, black is uh, not following some of the opening principles uh, develop developing the pieces. So more normal here will be uh, something more conservative, like bishop e7, for example, continue the development and looking for castle. But queen, this way to play, vain black, uh, used to be very risky. It's possible, okay, but uh, the positions derived from this variant used to be very chaotic. So white play queen d2, ready to castle long and protect the pawn. So it's now or never for black uh, to capture the pawn on b2. Really, made the move queen b6, delaying the development of the pieces, and uh, later have the opportunity to capture the pawn and don't capture is not consistent, really. Especially when white can castle protecting the pawn on b2. Uh, despite that, okay, we have to be careful with those kind of concepts because uh, why have a tricky move here? This uh, it didn't happen in the game, but in case of a3, we cannot use really the the, the same uh, way to think like okay, let's be conscious and the queen uh, went there to capture the pawn, so we have to to continue with that. In this case, it's different because why it why is not castling uh, yet, but to show you the trick. This is a well-known positional pattern to, to track the queen. Usually, those pawns on b2 are poison, uh, not only in the knight of Sicilia, also in many variants. So after queen takes, that will be a blunder because with knight a4, all the squares here are covered. Okay. Um, also, the queen protects the knight, so the queen is trapped here. This is an alternative for white uh, to defend the pawn on b2 in an indirect way. But okay. Uh, here, uh, Grandelius Nils select queen d2, allowing the capture of the pawn. Rook b1, the rook to the semi open file, queen a3, and now f5. So, as white have an advantage in development, here the main move is e5, but with f5, the idea is create intersection point on e6 and later continue increasing the pressure there. So, uh, okay, here, uh, Maxime Bashir Lagre play, decides to play bishop d7, what actually is a sideline. Uh, one of the of the main move in this position right now is knight c6. Uh, to put some pressure here, trying to remove the attacker of e6, and why continue with pawn takes, takes, knight takes e6, pawn takes e6, and e5, and this position is quite tactical. Uh, why continue opening the position with more pawns 
sacrifice and the point of that is just create more coordination in 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 in, in black set. But okay, uh, Maxim Bashir Lagre decides to play something more conservative. In this case, Bishop E7. But the uh, as there is no pressure on the knight on D4, why can continue increasing the the attack on the on E6? In case of the capture with the pawn, that is the less value pieces. Uh, Probably here, why can continue with bishop c4, increasing the pressure here. But okay, MBL decides to capture with the bishop to accelerate the development, even at the cost of the bishop pair. Knight takes, pawn takes, and bishop c4, more development. So, pawn of disadvantage for white. The pawn structure is very ugly, but uh, why still preserve the advantage in development and some attack in black positions? Knight bd7, uh, black have to continue development. Uh, giving away some material, so bishop takes on e6, knight c5, attacking the bishop, and here, uh, looking at the database, uh, bishop b3 apparently is, is the first move uh, out of the database, uh, here on the leech's database, at master level. But really, the, the retreat of the bishop to b3 seems to be very natural, as far as possible, keeping the minor pieces being supported by pounds from behind. But in the other hand, OK, also we have to consider that white is allowing the capture of the vision. But that leads to a reorganization of potential reorganization of the pawn structure, or, or also white can capture with the rook, winning a tempo on the queen. Okay, rook c8, and here, short castle. Finally, the capture on b3. In this case, white cannot capture with the pawn because after the check, the knight on c3 will be hanging. So why is forced to capture with the rook to kick the knight defended? Check, bishop e3, regrouping move. Queen c4. Normally, kick the queen on lies, but when we have a dark score bishop, it's something good because in that way the player can kick the bishop pair activity. Uh, now, rook f4, this is a tricky move because create a transversal uh, threat. Okay, for a clap for a game. With a classical time control, okay, is uh, there is a lot of uh, a lot of probabilities to spot the threat, okay, the discovery attack within material. But those kind of move creating a, a transversal threat uh, with a discovery attack really are very difficult to spot in rapid blix gains, okay, when you have to make a move. Uh, so here, uh, La, uh, Maxine did a regrouping move to prevent the discovery of attack, uh, retreating the queen to, to e6, what is considered by the engine as a blunder because hands uh, the, the pawn on b7. The top, the top engine move in this position is not h5. This is a, another way to prevent the discovery of attack because now if I push the pawn, the knight is ready to capture the rook. Uh, in case the rook uh, goes back, the knight can come back to f6, and um, that will be basically as like a uh, indirect offer of a draw. But okay, queen e6, uh, Grandelius accepts the challenge, taking the pawn, and actually, yeah, why have an extra pawn? Material advantage uh, with more space. Okay, probably the, the unique potential trouble is the knight on c3 that is unstable, but at the same time, it's not so easy for. Or black put pressure on the knight because the knight is ready to take the output on d5. For castle, h3, useful move, covering g4, uh, making a room for the king. So rook to ba, black over the tray. And here, uh, Grandelius decides to play rook a7, attacking the pawn on a6. The trade of the rooks on ba, generally speaking, should be good as well because uh, white have mat uh, material advantage. Okay, uh, black decides to protect the pawn on a6. Simplifications due to the material advantage, and finally, white uh, take the outputs on, uh, on d5. About this position, uh, really, white have a clear extra pound, and uh, there is no uh, counterplay in this position for, for black. Also, the knight here is looking for this fork, uh, and in case that black decides to remove the output. Why can simplify or simply recapture with the pound, reorganizing uh, the, the pound structure? Uh, some move like, for example, the, I think the capture on e4, why can play knight takes on e7 check, followed maybe by queen d5 check, forking the rook, the knight, all the pieces will be hanging. So 
very tricky position. So rook b8 to remove the rook from a potential fork and also some invasion squares in the open file. And now c4, uh, reinforcing the, the outputs. So here, uh, bishop back to square away. According to the computer, the best move is the capture of the knight, but in that case, why can simple recapture, recapture reorganizing the, the pawn structure? Really? Okay, the engine says that the move of Bashir is a, is a mistake, but clearly this is the way to play when we know that we are in inferior position. So normally uh, we would like to kick some pieces on the board, hoping to kick the complexity of the game. So really, in a practical point of view, the move is perfect, understandable. So, okay, Queen F2. 97, so uh, MBL is trying to reroute his knight, maybe looking for for better squares. The, a knight landing on e5 will be very strong, but he has to be careful of the background. So bishop d4 to square away of the knight, anticipating the knight in that semi output. So bishop g5 attacking the rook, rook f5. Okay, both pieces are supported by the pawn. Actually, this pawn is hanging, but the bishop is hanging as well. So bishop h6. Now king h2. Uh, preventing some checks on b1. Uh, this pawn is still hanging. I suppose that uh, there is a trick here in case of the capture of the pawn on e5. Let me see. Just to verify. Okay, apparently the, the downside of the move is that the queen leaves the control of the invasion square and why can take the this square attacking the knight and creating some some, some threats uh, okay rook c8 pressing c4 and now queen g3 this move is very tricky because it seems to be like the pawn is hanging but okay here uh, maxine play g6 attacking the rook but in case of the capture on c4 after queen b3 is super tricky because if black move the rook back now, why I can jump with the knight to e7 or, or to f6, for example. Maybe e7 would be better to prevent king f7 because the knight on f6 blocks the rook and the king can come to defend the queen. But in this variant, there is a check. The knight cannot be captured due to the ping and white is winning the queen and the game. So, like uh, Maxine did uh, g6, queen to h4, attacking the bishop that is hanging. Also, there is some forks here I do it to the intersection point. Bishop back to cover e7. Rook f6, win e8. And here, uh, finally, the tactical blow. Rook takes. If blood capture with the king, h7 falls. If blood capture with the knight, the less value pieces, there is a four here. So the capture with the queen seems to be the unique move. But now with knight e7, uh, there is a fork uh, with simplifications. But not only that, really. The pawn on a7 hang, uh, is hanging at the end of the variant. Um, for that reason, uh, black have to recapture. Um, white can capture here, later g6 falls, and yeah, black decides to resign. So this was a fantastic attacking game played by Grandelius Nils. Uh, I think at this moment of the tournament, in round number five, with this victory, he, he take the, the sole lead of the of the tournament, but was a quite good uh, attacking game. Normally, those, those variants, like, the poison pawn in the knight of Sicilian, the positions are very uh, messy and um, it's very important, the calculations skill. So seems to be like uh, it's unnecessary playing this way for black, but okay, uh, MBL don't have to really, that is his main repertoire. In the other hand, you know, people can be very well prepared for the game because he played basically ex ex exclusively, you know, the, the the knight of Sicilian. Also, another factor is that actually he is competing for, for in, the, in the candidate tournaments, and maybe he don't want to show his his main preparation, so he is just playing some sidelines, even at the cost of imperial positions, reserving the uh, the good things, you know, when the when the candidate tournaments uh, have been restored. Okay. Uh, well, with this with, with this we finish with this game. Let's go to. Round number seven to see another Nidor Sicilian, but this time played between Fabiano Caruana and Maxime Bachir Lagre. Uh, we are going to see a common situation. Uh, MBL selecting a sideline in, in the in the Nidor Sicilian. So we have another 
Bishop G5, E6, F4, Queen B6, Queen D2, another poison pawn variant. The pawn on B2 is hanging, so black accept the challenge, capturing it, rook B1, Queen A3, and now Bishop E2. The first, in, the, in the previous game that we saw, Grandelius decides to play F5 to increase the pressure on, on E6. This way to play is more conservative. White is looking for, for a quickly castle, and in some cases, the bishop on F, F3 may be well placed. Knight e 6 pressing on d4, knight takes. Uh, this kind of move is made uh, to don't lose the initiative also because if white castle in this position, black can capture, followed by queen c5, forcing the trade of the queens because the queen and the king will be in the same line. So considering that white have a pound of disadvantage, it's very important to avoid those kind of variations. So in order to get rid of those kind of situations, the most simple thing to do is just Trade the knights to kick the initiative uh, be, to be able to castle quickly at some moment. So now e5, trying to open the position. Okay, knight e5, we are still in uh, th uh, theoretical territory. Knight takes on c5, white is. Uh, those, those characters seem to be that uh, leads to massive simplifications, but really. Normally, this, this way to play is very useful when we would like to kick the initiative because instead of uh, avoid the, the, the trade of the pieces, okay, trading the pieces, you are forcing your opponent to recapture. And doing that is a, is a way to, to kick the initiative, but okay, you need a balance normally in, in, in that case to, in order to avoid simplification. The most important simplification to avoid is the trade of the queens when we are attacking or when we have advantage in the battle. So here, okay, the the theory recommend okay the capture of the pawn with the with the of the knight with the c pawn, but instead of that, uh, MBL did the capture with the with the e pawn. So okay, a lot of comments. The move is a is a blunder, but I still have my my doubts if this is just an intentional blunder to see, you know, to test uh, Fabi preparation in this moment of the game. He started to think a lot, and he found over the board the, the best way to refute that, uh, pushing the pawn to uh, to e6. This is not uh, an easy move to spot. Uh, the idea is uh, kick the initiative and also keeping the, st the central pounds. Okay, uh, will be very difficult for black uh, complete development. Also. In case of the of the capture of the pound, there is some ways to continue opening the position with with f5, for example. Here, let's say something like bishop takes on e6, uh, f5, bishop takes and short castle attacking the bishop, and the attack may be very very strong uh, in this position and difficult difficult to defend because the rook have the open file and everybody is joining to the party here. So let's say something like bishop e6. Rook b3, the rook comes here to the center of the board. Very difficult position. For that reason, in order to keep the center closed, MBL play f6. Now Fabi dig the check, looking for a force variant. Now king to the center of the board, and now bishop h4. Uh, about this position, very important to know that, okay, with, uh, with the king in the center of the board, is a priority for white, kick the queens on the board. Uh, for that reason, right now, uh, Maxim Bashir Lagre could capture the, the pawn here, but uh, the bishop there is hanging. Uh, maybe a tactical motive, and why can continue his development, for example, castling and looking for the attack. So instead of that, he did d4, hoping that Y decides to reinforce the pawn or defend the pawn, because in this way he can play queen c3. Uh, trading queens, he can start to consolidate the material like that. So right now, Fabi did this move, we shot f2, allowing the, the, the trade of the queens, but on the other hand, he will be able to consolidate the, the pass bound um, and keeping the control of the position because black rooks are disconnected. This move is really a very human move. Uh, I think that uh, here the engine suggestion is rook b3. That probably, in my opinion, makes a lot of sense because it's a more direct way to prevent the queen trade. The variant that... that uh, Fabi select in the game allows the trade of the queen, but okay, he managed to justify uh, this with with purely calculation. But rook b3, I think, 
it's an easier way to prevent the queen because the rook is in the middle and the queen cannot get the outputs on c2. But well, okay, he did this. Uh, now MBL decides to trade queens and with f5 takes takes and c5. And he decides to protect the pawn. Now bishop f3 attacking the rook. Rook a7, unique move. And g4. The point here, okay, four, six pounds for white, seven pounds for black. But what a horrible position for me. The rooks are disconnected. Um, there is no way to coordinate the pieces here. Vlad cannot develop the pieces, so very difficult. Okay, he did g6, trying to create some space to activate the kingside rook. So bishop h4, attacking on f6, bishop d7, and now rook b6. Taking the invasion square, the point of the move is prepare some future pressure on d6. Because there is no way to protect that pawn, maybe with king c7, but in case of king c7, rook c6 check may be very annoying. So h5, h3. Now, okay, king to e8. Here makes more sense just capture here to try to activate the rook. He did this move, bishop g3, increasing the pressure on d6, intersection point here. Now rook c7, now king d3. The idea of king d3 in the end game. The king must be centralized and also preventing c4 because now the king can capture on d4. Mistakes, a lot of simplifications, but the white position is too strong due to the, to the, to the advantage of space. In this case, uh, we are in the engine and the advantage of space don't turn into over expansion as usually happens because there is no way for black to attack the base on g4 on f5. There is no knight and the lion score bishop cannot be moved because those squares are very well controlled. So for that reason, the advantage of a space in this specific engine is something very important. So takes, takes, bishop f8, king c4, activation of the king. Okay, uh, black is looking for some counterplay. Bishop e4, keeping everything connected. Bishop e7 here, maybe rook h3, to look for counterplay make, makes more sense. Okay, bishop e7. Bishop takes, finally the pound falls, um, falling the base, the rest of the pound falls as well. So uh, he did a transformation to a rook engine with two extra pounds um, in hands of Fabi. This should be more or less easy to convert. The king can improve, probably looking for the g6 square. Also, this king is passive, it's going to be controlled by the rook. Um, and here, uh, black decides to, to resign. So, in, in, in both cases, uh, MBL decides uh, to select a sideline, uh, accepting an inferior position, but okay, hoping to to uh, fish uh, something in the in the middle of the chaos, but without success. Uh, yeah, this this kind of positions uh, are just to play, basically to to play to win for black. Uh, okay, but. Very, very difficult as well, especially when you're a board and know that the Knight or Sicilian is your main rapper. Uh, that happened in round seven. Now we are going to see a, a game played in round number six uh, between the German Grandmaster Alexander Donchenko and uh, Ali Reza Filosa. So here, this game is very interesting because the normally, okay, in this game, Ali Reza decides to play a Queen's Gambit decline. The Queen's Gambit decline have a well-known reputation about being a hypersolic system in order to, to, to look for a long battle, maybe slightly worse, but uh, super solid. In this case, okay, we have the classical set of, of the Queen's Gambit decline, but in this moment, uh, we are going to see the first surprise of the game. Here, Bishop B4. Uh, this move, Okay, there is a rule that says knights before bishops. Normally, when a bishop goes out, immediately the pawn may be a target, especially with some move like queen g4. That is not possible right now. Uh, also, here there is some possible forks, but uh, with knight c6, lap kicks uh, everything under control. This looks like a kind of Niso Indian defense, but it's like a, an accelerated Niso Indian defense. Normally, the point of the bishop move is trade the bishop for the knight in order to create uh, a damage in white pawn structure. Uh, here, okay, normally, here, white, white play knight f3, normal develop move. 
in case of a3, after something like bishop takes, takes knight of six, we can have a, a quite similar position in comparison with some of the variants of the of the Niso Indian defense. The position may be very tricky because it looks like why have the bishop pair, but as a compensation, black managed to create a damage in the structure. But it's not too simple because why can get rid of the double pound in a very easy way, but after the recapture, uh, the last score bishop is going to have this diagonal open and black preserves an advantage in development. So this is those kind of situations where it's a dynamic uh, balance in the position because there is a lot of difference between the minor pieces and the and the pawn string. Uh, why play knight f3? And now, okay, uh, Aliresa decides to capture c4. So there is some doubts if what Aliresa played uh, was a queen's gambit decline, because right now he is really accepting. I would say that a perfect name for this would be uh, a delay queen's gambit accepted. But the point of this is that he's going to play in a greedy way, defending the material advantage with b5, taking advantage of the pin. Very interesting way to play. Um, okay, e3 to recover the pawn on c4, and now b5, protecting the, the pawn. a4, uh, putting pressure on the base, c6, reinforcing the base. Bishop d2. Uh, now, without, without the pin, the knight is ready to put pressure on b5. So he reinforced the, the bishop to avoid half the bishop hanging. And after pound takes, bishop takes on c2. Bishop takes and pound takes. So he is still half uh, the material advantage. Why half the bishop pair and advantage in development? So the owner of the bishop pair should try to, to open the position with this kind of move, b3. Uh, here, a move like b4 doesn't work because after the capture, the rook on the corner is going to be hanging. So Alireza decides to continue development with bishop b7 protecting the rook now before it's a threat. So why capture? And finally, uh, black decides to push the pawn to b4. So why restore the material balance and wins the bishop pair and have a unique ice over hand? Okay, black don't have the bishop pair, the pawn structure, generally speaking, is worse, but Managed to create two connected tasers that may be very uh, dangerous, especially for, for, for a potential engine in the future. So, okay, bishop b2, knight of six. Here, both players continue with pre standard move, developing move, until connect the, the major pieces in the background. So, okay, now uh, white decides to play knight d2, probably trying to reroute the knight. Uh, to to the queen side, or uh, and also maybe to be able to move the queen somewhere, because uh, why have to be careful with a potential trade on f3? And now here, if I this move is a bit counterintuitive because without the bishop pair, black is opening the position. Really, these central pounds, okay, especially the pawn on d4 is very solid because it's made half a base on e3. So black is hoping basically that trading a couple of pounds, the white center is going to be more unstable and maybe to create a real hanging pounds. These two pounds are like hanging pounds, but not real hanging pounds because the pawn on d4 is being supported by the pawn on e3. But if black managed to provoke the advance of the pounds, some squares around the structure may be available, for, for the, especially for the knight. So here, uh, Donchenko decides to play bishop c2, keeping the tension, and now queen c7, and h3, okay, kind of waiting move. The engine suggests here d5 as the best, but this move is not easy to do when you are losing the control of the knight, and allowing that the knight gets some important squares, and from this location, the knight potentially can support the advance of the, of the pass pounds on the queens. Okay, h3. Makes a lot of sense. Okay, just a kind of waiting move. Uh, rook to e8, potential semi open file in case of the trade of the pounds. Bishop b3, supporting the, the pound on c4, and now a6. Okay, uh, as well, uh, waiting move, but improving a little bit the position, making a room for the king. Now knight f3, and here rook a6. This move is just. Uh, in my opinion, the strongest move of the game. Uh, this is a case of a uh, rook maneuver when the sixth rank is uh, empty. 
uh, potentially the root can be transferred to the other plan in order to have a potential new attacker in that sector of the world looking for the intersection point. Those ideas are brilliant because normally, uh, for many reasons, okay, for the global vision of the board, long move is looking for long move and also transversal game. Normally, all the players have a vision of the world looking for forward move. But this way to play is uh, very typical for a master level. So uh, this is a very good example about rook, how to do a maneuver with the rook, incorporate the rook using the ranks. Okay, uh, knight takes on e5, takes, pound takes, black sacrifice a pound, but now removing the pound on d4, this pound can be recaptured and the c5 square is available for the knight. So why decides to keep the material uh, advantage? But now after knight c5, okay, the knight here is in front of the most advanced, well, one of the most advanced pound of the opponent. The most advanced is e5, but in this location, potentially the knight can be dislodged with f5. But here there is no pound beside to remove the knight. So it's a very, very strong location for the knight. We substitute, square away, and now a4. Here, uh, the, the original idea was transfer the rook, but with the bishop on c2, the square is covered. So there is no more the possibility to create intersection point. But in the other hand, the, the new uh, achievement for black is this strong knight on c5 that is supporting the advance. So he did here a4. Uh, it's a very tricky move because it seems to be like the pawn is hanging, but uh, in part of the variant, the queen can come to c6, creating a checkmate threat and attacking a piece hanging on, on a4. It's a winning material. For that reason, Donchenko decides to play f5. That is the best move in the position and quite logical because black advantage is based in the queen's a majority. Why have a king's a majority? Why should try to play in the sector of the world where he have the, the material advantage? So b3 or fourth move, it should be one. Now, uh, look to the background. This is uh, like it's just regrouping in order to connect the rooms. A very common characteristic of those super strong players that they usually don't play with, with things hanging. Everything is connected. This is known as fortress strategy at the base of the pound chain. Okay. Uh, here, uh, okay, look to the background. Uh, why push? Hoping to open lines because. The owner of the bishop pair would like to trade pounds to enable new diagonals. And here, according to the principle that the player that don't have the bishop pair should keep the position closed, f6 is the best, the best way to prevent the opening of new lines. Instead of that, Alivesa did queen d3. That is a very tricky move because he's threatening checkmate in one move and also the pawn on e3 is hanging. So, rook f2 to prevent the checkmate. Uh, this here, according to the engine, the position right now is plus two in favor of white, but very difficult to understand. This is a very regular position, rook is connected, two pass pounds. It's very dynamic. And really, the move that the German Grandmaster did is quite logical because the engine suggests queen e2 to protect the pawn with the queen. But there is a well known rule that says the queen is not to defend. The justification of the engine suggestion is that after f6 with rook f4, the rook, instead of be defending the pawn on g2, can leave the queen out of the game, kind of trap. So it will be very difficult for black coordinate the pieces again. But those ideas, okay, very really what Donchenko did is more human, defending with the less valuable pieces. And now uh, Alireza did f6. One more time, a case of an exception, because the, the stockfish says right now that the best move is just capture the pawn. But who is going to capture removing the pounds and open the lines for the bishop? So basically, the decision of the capture of the pound can be based in uh, purely calculation, a very concrete variant. But according to the principle, really, what the Iranian Grandmaster did makes more, much more sense. Okay, F6 to kick the bishop's block. Not the best, but quite logical. We are not. Uh, Engines, okay, so the game is still very, very instructive. Okay, now bishop d4. Why take this uh, strong location for the bishop? Uh, now knight d4, uh, adding a new attacker to the king side. And here, uh, why decides to 
to capture the night, uh, to connect the queen and the rook, uh, probably hoping to create an opposite color bishop situation. But as the queens are still on the board, that really mm, cannot represent a warranty of a draw. Uh, why did the move according to the to the stockfish? Okay, uh, one of the best moves is move the rook to f4 or to f3 to leave the queen uh, out of the game, but place the rook in the far end of the bishop or move the rook that is protecting the checkmate on g2 really is not logical. From a human point of view, really what, what Donchenko did makes more sense. Take stakes, and now rook a3 trying trying to block the passers. Uh, Alireza moved the rook, attacking the pawn on c4, while push the pawn to protect the pawn, now king a7. This, this is a move that improve the location of the king eventually because if the pawn advances this diagonal maybe open maybe it's a prophylactic move in the long term it's not looking for a specific purpose at the moment queen d2 now b2 okay uh, not a good move according to the to the computer uh, basically the idea what he was looking for is just with the with the pawn sacrifice open a line for the rook to try to get the background because the white king have some background issues the position is very difficult, and here, uh, well, this is a case where normally capture with the less valuable pieces used to be the best. And in this case, the rule, as in most of the case, is the best thing to do, but very difficult to do when the pawn on c5 is being guarded by the bishop. Tonchenko did the more human way uh, to, to proceed, capturing with the queen, not following the rule, but keeping the pawn defended. So that was a, well, more than a position, really, that is tactics. He's opening lines. Rook to the open file, queen to a2, and finally the, the rook joins to the parry. So rook f1, rook cba, threatening the trade of the rooks and the, invading the, the background with the new rook. Queen f2 takes, the capture with the, with the king is a unique move because in case of capture with the queen, Vlad can move the rook to deflect the queen and later do the checkmate on g. Unique move, king takes, rook b1 check, and king e2. And in this moment, uh, there is no forced way to continue with the attack because there is no, uh, let's say, useful checks uh, available. The unique potential check may be rook b2, but that is what is covered by the vision. So right, right now, uh, white is uh, ready to trade queens. So as we are attacking, we don't we don't want to we wouldn't like to, to trade queens right, basically. So he did this spectacular move, the best move in the position, a long move and also a backward move to avoid the trade of the queens, but also ready to incorporate the queen in the attack through the lions because the lions squares are very weak. Generally speaking, black is only white is only controlling the data squares. Queen f4, offering the trade of queens. Um, okay, uh, Alireza says no. Queen d2, four checks. Uh, bishop c3. And finally, the rook is hanging and still with a, with an attack going on. Um, the game continues a couple of moves more. Queen takes. Queen c1. Uh, queen f1 check. Um, yeah, here, after king here, the, the rook come here. Um, why have to play bishop d2? And in this moment, after queen f1, uh, why decides to, to resign? So th this game is very instructive to see how to play uh, an opening with a, with a strong reputation of being super solid, but uh, in hands of this uh, young talent, uh, somebody said a potential future world champion, he can convert this, uh, this opening in something very dynamic. So very instructive. Uh, the way to play of the Iranian Grandmaster, um, well, maybe that can work as a motivation for all the viewers to, to try to emulate this very nice zone of your games. I will try to do as well. So, well, guys, with this, we finish with the with this uh, second part of the highlights of the Tata, Tata Steel tournament. I hope you find those comments and analyze interesting and useful for you. So don't forget, if you enjoy the content, like and subscribe, share with your friends, and hope to see you in a new video. Take care. Bye.